was going to make a perfect spot for a house. There's a lot of really wonderful people that live here. And that's, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a big part of me that the reason I moved to the Priest Lake is because of the friendships that, that were built. The Sacketts bought this property a few years ago wanting to build on it a modest family home and they got all the building permits that they needed from the local authorities and they started work putting gravel on the site. There's actually homes in front of ours, but what appealed to us is there is an easement for the pro uh, secondary property owners to have access to the lake. And how we were going to position the house is the view would be, we would have a clear view of the lake, clear to the south end of, of Priest Lake. Well, naturally, we all have dreams, and you know, it, was, it was exciting. And you're applying for a permit in Bonner County to build a house. Is yeah, they it, give you a checklist, actually. A checklist, and it says, okay, sewer sign off where you're going to hook up to your building plans as your house plans they have to see um, a schematic of that before uh, the gentleman that we had purchased the property from had checked with the corps of engineers and he said it was fine to build on we were 90 percent done with getting ready to start putting footings when the epa showed up and told us to quit working The agency has argued that the Sacketts violated the Clean Water Act when they started to build their family home for themselves. There was three of them um, and told uh, whoever was running the piece of equipment at that point in time, uh, we want you to stop and we want to see your permits for filling in a wetland and then the phone calls started. Them saying, you can't do anything, you need to stop immediately, you need to, you know, where's your wetlands permit? If you're building, if you buy a piece of property, you should know if it's in wetlands. So, therefore, I started to do research, and uh, I said, so how do I find this piece of property in the wetlands inventory? And she says, here's the coordinates. And when I actually pulled up the coordinates, it's not on there. The coordinates that she gave me for our piece of property was not on there. They did not give us anything in writing of what we did wrong. They just said, we're, we're, you're building in wetlands, you have to stop, okay? Prove to us that we're doing something wrong. And after two certified letters to the EPA, we finally got something in writing, seven months later. I think they bullied us. I think they intimidated us. I think that's the tactics they use. You feel very small. You feel like you're the underdog. You feel, why would we even try and do this? How can we fight them? How do we move forward with our life? And then, you know, we had an attorney at this time, uh, Les Weatherhead, that, you know, he explained to us, he said, this is a huge fight you guys are taking on. He goes, and it's going to be very costly, and you will probably not win. They're the government. So the Sacketts, represented by PLF, filed a lawsuit in federal court demanding that they have an opportunity to prove that there are no wetlands on this property, that they can go ahead and build their home without EPA saying no. If we don't fight, you know, we're looking at a lot of fines and they're gonna, you know, they're, they want us to put the property back the way it was, fence it, pay them penalties, and you know, they're, they're threatening you with $30,000 or whatever that number is a day. And you know, all that stuff is, you know, weighs on you. It's like, well, how, how, do, how, do, we, how do we get out of this? There will be nothing left of the company. There'll be jobs that are, you know, 40 jobs that will be lost. We didn't have the financial means to fight them, especially on a lot that's not worth enough money to, to fight that. The spring of 2008, when we found out the PLF was going to take our case on, I was grateful that it felt like somebody was actually in our corner now. My phone rang and I, I, got, I knew who it was by the phone number and I answered the phone and it was Damien and I could tell by his tone of voice as soon as he said, said hello to me. He says they're, they're going to hear our case in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has now decided to hear this case and to answer the fundamental question whether when federal agents come onto your property you have a right to your day in court and you don't have to pay a king's ransom in order to get it. Man. I'm so excited to tell my wife, but then on the other side, I wasn't excited to tell her because we know that 
it's going to be a lot more to deal with, a lot more emotions and, and stress. If you know you're right, you stand up for what you believe in and, and always try hard to follow through. We just want to get on, get on with our life and, and just live at Priest Lake and be happy.